From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 530, streaming now. And now at 530, splats for a cause. A Hoosier battling cancer is getting support from his workout community. Uh, you can go all out this weekend to help too. Topping our lineup today, a teacher has an innovative solution for remote learning. Teachers across the country are asking for it now, how it's helping make virtual lessons more effective. And a new product gets groundbreaking clearance as a proven killer of coronavirus. The reason the disinfectant works longer and is likely cheaper than typical cleaners. And an old hobby is finding new popularity during the pandemic. How sports card collecting is taking on a bit of a modern twist. And thank you, Chris. We'll look to the west with our downtown Weather Now camera. Looking west is kind of looking away from the most active weather, so not as much happening west of Indy. It's all to the south and east for now. Some of the thunderstorms were with real strength. The warning's just been issued in Franklin County. I'll take you down toward Brookville in one second. What has been northwest of Indy has faded away, but any time between now and, say, 8 o'clock, these will continue to drift to the south and flare up. Some of these will be strong enough to produce some 60 mile per hour winds. You can see the cluster of lightning, heavy rainfall just to the northwest of Brookville. This is moving to the south very slowly, producing torrential rainfall, quarter size hail, and then also the 60 mile per hour winds. Not as strong, but certainly producing heavy rainfall. The rain that sits over Rush County and Rushville, that will drop and uh, move between Greensburg, Batesville, and Brookville. As far as temperatures, we'll slowly see these come down. It's 90 in uh, Bloomington, 92 in Indianapolis. I'm getting close to needing to wear glasses on air. I mean, <laughs> I can see stuff from far away, but I, I can help you. all right. You may need to grab my glasses. 101, that's the temperature, what it feels like in Martinsville. And again tomorrow, heat index values will stay around 100. There's your temperature trend this evening. We'll drop into the upper 70s with thunderstorms diminishing. Thank you, Kevin. Hoosiers are lacing up their tennis shoes to get a good sweat in going for a worthy cause. WRTV's Trey Washington shows us how Orange Theory Fitness downtown is still finding a way to give back and support members even during a pandemic. At Hoosier Hospitality, we pride ourselves in knowing all of our members' names. And there's one member in particular who stands out. It's all about his strength and resiliency even during all of his treatments that he's had over the last two years now in his fight. <laughs> Pratt is the reason classes will be full this weekend for special sessions. Pratt is participating in clinical treatment research right now, but even after being diagnosed with cancer, he hasn't let much keep him away from the studio. Pratt's have been with us since February of 2018 when we first opened, and so we've been able to follow as a community and really help fight with him during his battle with sarcoma cancer. He's continued to show up and really push his limits as he can in the studio. And it's been great that he has felt safe to do that as well. So how will Splat for Pratt work? We do coach to five heart rate zones. The high end of those heart rate zones are considered orange and red. And the amount of time you spend in that is equal to one minute in the orange and red equals one Splat point. So that's where we got Splat for Sprat. Obviously burning in here as a team to build awareness for sarcoma cancer. And even though there is a fee to get in on the workout, this isn't about helping the press by paying their medical bills. It's about raising money for sarcoma cancer research efforts that could lead to a cure. Especially now, going through what we are going through in 2020, we really just want to bring the community together. Working for you downtown, Troy Washington, WRTV. And we've got all the details on how you too can take part in this effort when you read this story on WRTV.com. Chris. Jacob Blake is still recovering after being shot by police in Kenosha, Wisconsin several times and he's now paralyzed from the waist down. That's according to his father. It's unknown if that paralysis will be permanent. Now, prior to the shooting, the city had been putting off getting body cameras for officers, pointing to concerns over policy and cost. The only video of the shooting was captured by a neighbor. Hurricane Laura intensifying today. Forecasters predicting that it could become a category three or higher. Marco was minor in comparison, but there's already trouble for low-lying areas of the Gulf Coast. Storm surge washed away about 500 feet of levee in Grand Isle, Louisiana. Now, the National Guard put up sandbags to protect the area with predictions of possibly 11 feet of storm surge and 15 inches of rain. It could prove too much for other areas. 
if they have a failure, and in some cases there will be failures, then the internal areas will flood. And uh, it's very difficult then, once you have a, a breach in the levee, uh, to keep the water on the outside from coming in. Hurricane Katrina hit the Lower Ninth Ward 15 years ago this month. A $14 billion network of new levees and flood walls were put in place. But the Army Corps of Engineers said that the system will stop providing adequate protection in as little as four years because of rising sea levels and shrinking levees. There are up to 100,000 miles of levees nationwide, and most of them are in need of repair. Levees received a D on the American Society of Civil Engineers National Infrastructure Report Card. Where you have the challenge is in those areas that are not yet protected. Uh, that's going to be a problem. And uh, where they're outside the levees at some distance and there isn't any uh, normal flood protection. Gerald Galloway's life's work is in flooding, partially with the Army Corps of Engineers. He says best case scenario, if water overtops levees, is pumps to get it out or homes that are elevated or at the very least making sure people are evacuated. The FDA commissioner now apologizing for overstating the benefits of treating coronavirus patients with plasma. Stephen Hahn agreed with President Trump. He said plasma had the potential of helping 35% of coronavirus patients survive. The FDA says that claim is much higher than what research from the Mayo Clinic found. Hahn says the criticism from scientists and medical experts is quote, entirely justified. Still ahead in our lineup, one teacher is working to overcome the challenges of remote learning, how it's helping make virtual lessons more effective. Trying to teach through a screen can be a challenge for educators. Many will tell you that. Usher Qureshi shows us how one teacher came up with a solution with just a couple pieces of wood and some imagination. Miter saw to cut piles to length. Drill press. The hole that the knob goes through. And belt sander. To sand it all smooth. Bob Pinta has converted his home garage into a bustling workshop. And then like chisels and a mallet and like hand tools. The high school math and computer science teacher is solving an online teaching problem, one contraption at a time. When I would be teaching, uh, I could use my iPad and share the screen, but no matter how good of a stylus you get, writing on the iPad is not the same as writing on paper. Pinta found that his students could either see what he was writing or him, but not both. So he designed a phone stand that could act as a virtual overhead projector. I would join the Zoom on my phone, pointing the phone down at the table, and I would have the students pin my hand so that it was the big one. The height adjustable stand allows for a much more interactive lesson. So they would be able to follow along as I went and they could see both my face and the paper as I zoomed. Hi, my name's Bob Pinta and I'm a teacher. His wife posted a video to see if other teachers might be interested in one. I come around so I can show people the adjustment now. It quickly racked up tens of thousands of views with orders pouring in from all over. We have shipped across the United States. Each weekend they sit in the driveway for teachers wishing to pick one up in person. At $30 plus shipping, Pinta says he wanted to keep the contraption, which doesn't have an official name, affordable. We wanted it cheap enough where a, a teacher could go, oh, I'm gonna try it. And even if it doesn't work, they're out 30 bucks. With more than 200 completed and another 160 in production, Pinta has proven if necessity is the mother of invention, then ingenuity is likely the father. Reporting from Buffalo Grove, Illinois, I'm Usher Qureshi. Usher, thank you. Next in our lineup, a new product getting the okay to help kill coronavirus. The reason the disinfectant works longer and how it could help save money. Recreational marijuana has been a source of controversy in many places. So what happens when its cultivation takes over small communities? Dan Grossman has a look at what some areas say are the pros and the cons. In a land of peaks and valleys, there are highs. The town of Sawatch itself is really not that big. We have only close to 500 residents. And then there are the lows they sometimes bring. Well, everybody knew everybody, what they were doing, what was going on. And then all of a sudden we had a flux of people that just, they were out of towners. 
Doug Peoples owns a grocery store in the heart of Sawatch, Colorado, a town that has never seen more than 700 people call it home in the last 30 years. Most of them came in with uh, just a little bit of money to try to get started. In 2014, that changed as soon as Colorado became the first state in the country to legalize recreational marijuana. I would venture to guess we saw two to 3,000 people just move in almost overnight. Because of its vast landscape, a county that had less than two people per square mile started to quite literally grow and rapidly as people from other states started coming in and growing pot with the intent of returning it to their home state and selling it, something that's illegal. You just hope to come across it. It caused issues for County Sheriff Dan Warwick, who had fewer than 10 deputies available to police more than 3,200 square miles of land. You'd see people come in. They would grow on a piece of property that they leased for a short period of time, leave all their trash and junk everywhere, and then just pack up and leave at, after they harvested. There was squalor and crime as sheds laid abandoned, and a town used to the quiet landscape of agricultural life had to find ways to adapt. For a while there, this place was kind of the wild, wild west. And adapt, County Commissioner Jason Anderson did. The first year, it was only $6,000. Again, because the, the lease Legal operations weren't up and running. In 2016, the county overwhelmingly passed an excise tax that would give them 5% of all products sold from legal growers to retailers. While the first year's tax was small, the second year brought in $67,000. But last year, the county got $280,000 in tax money, meaning it could finally start benefiting from a product that had caused so much turbulence. We hired a code enforcement officer and outfitted him with everything he needs full time, which is something we could never even think about beforehand. The county also set up a scholarship fund for local students planning to go to college and helped others get to school by updating trail systems that encourage kids to walk in a county where there's a 46% childhood poverty rate. I think it's better off in that we need all the resources we can to continue to adapt to the changes. Some places still have yet to see the money. But in a land of peaks and valleys, the folks here hope they're heading to the former after already experiencing the latter. I'm Dan Grossman. Dan, thank you. Now, Americans are being more strategic about their money. Almost half say that they are saving more than usual. About a quarter are paying down debt faster than before. Two-thirds spending less. That's all according to a APNORC poll. But many people are still hurting financially. About a quarter of Americans say they cannot pay at least one bill it's about double that number for black and Hispanic Americans. It's only been a few days, but those who will be repairing the iconic downtown Ellis Air's clock now know what's in store for them. The scaffolding went up on Friday to allow crews to reach the 10,000 pound clock at the corner of Washington and Meridian. 84 years of exposure to hard weather and exhaust fumes has taken its toll. Some of the bronze exterior has corroded and fallen off. Water damage has left holes in the steel and trash and debris fill the bottom. Four years ago, the actual clock was repaired and now the bronze and steel case that surrounds, surrounds it is getting attention. The work is expected to take about six weeks. The goal is to have the clock in place by Thanksgiving Eve to welcome the return of the cherub. So weird to be talking about Thanksgiving. 10,000 oh. pounds. I'm no longer standing under that looking up at it. Uh, oh yeah, I remember doing that story four years ago. Now every time when I walk over there, yeah, that's something. Yeah, a little bigger loop. <laughs> Cherub will add a little more weight to that. Well, the weight of the clouds looks obvious at times today as we've gotten some real downpours out of this a very humid air mass that we have. Temperature for now 92. That's our warmest temperature so far today. There's the wind, generally 10 miles per hour. You catch the strong outflow from some of the thunderstorms. We get some nice gusts across central Indiana. Strongest winds then are with the thunderstorms that are producing the torrential rainfall down toward Brooklyn uh, or Brookfield uh, in Franklin County, Brookville. Sorry, I'm getting all this confused. See this little line here? That's what we call the gust front, the cooler air that pushes out from thunderstorms and helps build others. And so as long as that boundary is drifting south, we may get more thunderstorm development. A couple of thunderstorm warnings here in the last hour to the southeast portion of the viewing area. Uh, Brookville, heavy downpour over Metamora as as well, and you may get some 60 mile per hour winds there. Tomorrow morning, it will be dry. 
we may see a little patchy fog, especially if you've had some rain this evening. That makes it a little more fog prone first thing in the morning. 84 at 11 tomorrow. Temperatures reach 90 and above again tomorrow afternoon. Kind of what we call a persistence forecast. We repeat what happened Monday and then we did it today and then we'll do it one more day before we start to see kind of a pattern change. Temperatures throughout the region, low 90s. Some spots 93 in Lafayette, warmest temperature we've had this month in Indianapolis. That was 94 degrees. There are a couple of showers and thunder showers that will begin to pop up during the day on Thursday. We'll talk more about what happens as we move to the weekend coming up. Your fave trash man here. What's up, everybody? Well, he is Philadelphia's favorite trash man, and he is inspiring support for him and his co-workers during this pandemic. Terrell Hagler runs the Instagram page, Your Fave Trash Man, showing the daily lives of sanitation workers in the city. Now, when lockdown started, he says that people started producing about 30% more trash every day. Then the department had to operate with more than 200 employees out. It, it became a really uneasy time, but um, we still want to do our job and we still want the streets to be clean. So we still come to work every day. We just got to be extra cautious and extra careful and just, you know, pray everything goes right. The workers wear masks and gloves, but Hagler says they could use more protection. So he used his platform to fundraise by selling T-shirts to get PPE and cleaning supplies for the department. He just went beyond his goal of raising more than $30,000. Now he's pushing for sanitation workers to be deemed essential and to be eligible for hazard pay. And I'm pushing just to get a seat at the table to talk to the powers that be us to start the conversation of why and how do we accomplish hazardous pay, not just for Philadelphia, but for the nation. Now, since starting the page, he says that the community has stepped up, giving the workers food and drinks. Now, although the t-shirt campaign is over, he's still accepting donations of masks, gloves, and cleaning supplies, and there's a link on his Instagram page. A new disinfectant is proving effective against coronavirus. The EPA just gave the Allied Bioscience product emergency use authorization. It is the only long-lasting COVID killer, and it's called SurfaceWise 2. It's sprayed on surfaces. It kills COVID as well as other viruses. It's a continuously self-cleaning surface. So as contaminants, um, germs, virus cells land on the surface, the product is continuously and begins immediately killing those virus cells and pathogens. Its makers say testing proves it works for months. The EPA says it can kill coronavirus for up to seven days in one use. Uh, it's also safe for surfaces and people so far. The emergency use was approved for American Airlines, planes, and Texas-based companies. The state worked with the company on the waiver, and now others are putting in waivers. The application opportunities for this product are sort of endless. There's anywhere where you have public spaces or high traffic and therefore high contamination environments. Um, this is a solution that goes in between your daily cleaning. The company says it costs about 40 to 50 cents per square foot a year to use the product. To put that into perspective for you, a large school bus has about 320 square feet of space. That's about $160 per bus a year. Allied Bioscience didn't come up with this overnight. The company started making this as a product to kill hospital bacteria about a dozen years ago. Now, finally in our lineup, card collecting is making a comeback. How it's getting a new twist that could lead to some serious cash. An old hobby with a new twist. It's called card breaking, and you don't have to be a sports fan to take part, and you could make some serious cash. A lot of the traditional sports card stores, just like the ones back in the day you might have gone to, starting to stream card breaking events online. So several people will buy portions of a card pack. They get to keep whatever is in that portion, regardless of how much they paid for it. The whole philosophy behind it is a lot of people can't afford to buy the whole pack. We offer a lot of packs from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, which are very expensive. Just Rip It streams these events on Facebook and YouTube, and they say there has been a lot more interest recently with a lack of sports and sports betting, and also a real desire for some nostalgia. And opening those packs brings back a good memory for a lot of our customers that are in the 30s, 40s, 50s, some even in the 60s, 60 years old. Uh, where they're living their youth on a live stream at home 
and watching great packs, even if you're in the pack or not. It's just fun to see these little time capsules open. Now, some people may pay under $100 for a break, and the experts will tell you that there is a chance a card could be as worth as much as millions of dollars. I mean, we snap button off. We have a lot of sound bites that we do when we pull the cards. We make it exciting, but I tell everybody it's the community and the cards that are there that we thank that make the show exciting and great. Of course, you could win nothing, but card collectors do say they have never seen a higher return on investment when it comes to sports cards. Well, there is hope for a business boom among some farmers who are a bit unconventional. Our Chris Conti showing us a story that he's working on for tomorrow. No sector of the nation's economy has been immune from COVID. That includes the nation's CBD farmers, who were hit particularly hard by this crisis. Tomorrow, we show you the help that they and other small businesses are still asking for and why some of these products are gaining new popularity. Temperatures made it into the 90s again today, and look at tomorrow's forecast. Right back there with humidity, we do start to cool off. I'll tell you why we cool off toward the end of the week. That's all for the news at 5.30. More news starts right now. From the station working for you, 